Jeff, get a march. March. of Mrs. Conway reflect great credit upon herself, the United States Marine Corps, and the Department of Defense. Signed, Robert M. Gates.
Jim's steadfast leadership as Commandant came at a critical time during the Iraq conflict's darkest days. Drawing upon a proud tradition of adaptability, the Marines and Anbar reached back to their small wars heritage and produced an innovative approach to counterinsurgency, all the while keeping their boots on the neck of the enemy. In a letter recognizing the Marines' role in Iraq, General Ray Odierno wrote that thanks to Marine efforts, Anbar province was the epicenter for the Sunni awakening and serves as a model for units to emulate during the surge of 2007. Yet General Conway was never one to rest on hard-won laurels. Worried his Marines might go soft with the amenities of big bases, he frequently declared that wherever there's a fight, that's where the Marine Corps belongs. So once again, battle-hardened Marines have been sent into insurgent strongholds, this time in Afghanistan contributing a new chapter in the Marine Corps Roll of Honor with their sweat and with their blood. During General Conway's career and under his leadership, to paraphrase General Douglas MacArthur, Marines have continued to write their own history and continued to write it in red on their enemy's breast. As Commandant Jim made the health of the force a top priority, in ensuring his Marines had the right tools for the job and new Marines were of the highest quality. Today, Marine recruits consistently exceed both DOD and Marine Corps standards. When I directed the Marines to boost their numbers in this high demand period, most expected it would take five years to add 27,000 to the rolls. They did it in less than half that time. Mindful of the heavy price paid by so many of our service members, Jim and Annette were passionate advocated for more and better resources to care for the ill or injured. He established the Wounded Warrior Regiment to provide state-of-the-art care and outreach to wounded or sick Marines and their families, and to do so long after they had left the service. Never once has he stopped caring for and bettering one of America's most cherished institutions and one of the world's most feared and respected fighting forces. As the Marines look to the future, I ask them to think hard about their role after spending the past eight years fighting as the second planned army so long. They need to preserve both their maritime soul and the hard-won counterinsurgency skills they've developed during this past decade. Doing this will demand an intellectual investment similar to that of Marine Corps forebears who developed novel amphibious warfare concepts in the years leading up to I can't think of a Marine better suited to lead that effort than General James Amos, the 35th Commandant of the Marine Corps. At the risk of revealing his age, General Amos first flew the venerable F-4 Phantom. For those of the younger ones of you here, that's the fighter you always see on the History Channel. Documentaries on Vietnam. While General Amos will be the first naval aviator to serve as Marine Corps Commandant, he is, like all the Marines, a rifle and first. He will, I'm confident, find the right balance between what is needed to win the wars we're in, while ensuring Marines remain the expeditionary force in readiness for the 21st century. As the Marines' new operating concept says, the call send in the Marines connotes both a demand for action and a presumption of success. That is the legacy he will help carry forward. I'm told General Amos is on a one-man mission to banish the term former Marine from the lexicon. He says you're either a Marine in uniform or you're a Marine wearing another uniform, but you're a Marine for life. In Jim Conway's case, <laughs> Jim Conway's case, I understand his next uniform will likely be a pair of fishing waders. Whether or not those waders come in marine digital camouflage, there's no question in my mind that he will always be a marine's marine for life. Jim, thank you for your life.
life dedicated in selfless service to our nation. We wish you and Annette all the best as you begin the next chapter in your life.